Iron deficiency is often said to be the number one most common nutrient deficiency in the world. In this video, I will explain why, at least in the developed world, the idea of widespread iron deficiency is simply false, and why most people actually have too much iron in their body instead, even when their blood levels are low. What might sound crazy at first is a very common problem called iron overload or iron toxicity. In the next few minutes, I will explain the concept of iron toxicity, why more and more people suffer from it, why it's often misdiagnosed through normal blood tests, and what you can do to treat it. To start off, let's talk about what iron is and why we need it. Iron is an essential dietary mineral, meaning we need to get it from food and cannot produce it ourselves. Its most important role is for energy metabolism because iron is needed to carry oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body. This is done through the use of hemoglobin, which is a protein in your red blood cells that carries oxygen to your body's organs and tissues and transports carbon dioxide from your organs and tissues back to your lungs. Besides that, we also need iron for a well-functioning immune system and cognitive function. Because of the important role of iron in our body, Blood tests looking for an iron deficiency are among the most common nutrient tests out there. Every year, millions of people are diagnosed with an iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia. These patients are then told to take an iron supplement to counteract the supposed lack of iron. But what if I told you that in most cases iron deficiency markers, be it low blood iron, low ferritin, or low transferrin, are very misleading. And what if I told you that in many cases you aren't actually iron deficient, but suffer from iron toxicity, so excess levels of iron? Again, I know this sounds crazy, but once you understand the biochemistry behind iron and how it is used in the body, you will also understand that the standard way of looking at iron deficiency, iron blood testing, and iron supplementation are at best misleading and at worst dangerous. The first thing you need to know is that the iron in our body is both a blessing and a curse. Like I said before, it is necessary for oxygen transport and therefore ensures our survival. But its ability to attract oxygen also makes it a super reactive mineral in the body that can create oxidative stress, inflammation, and many other problems. So to help keep iron in check, the body likes to bind it to certain other molecules that either carry iron to where it is needed in the body or keep it from creating problems. That means there is a huge difference between bioavailable non-toxic iron that is bound to something and can be used by the body and biounavailable toxic iron that just sits there by itself, cannot be used and irritates tissue. When it comes to health and vitality, our goal should always be to maximize bioavailable iron and minimize biounavailable iron. However, in many cases, that doesn't mean taking iron supplements, even if your blood levels are low. Why? Because most of our body's iron isn't actually supposed to come from the outside, so from our diet or supplements, and instead from the body's iron recycling system, technically called reticuloendothelial system. Here is how it works. Every day, your body needs around 25 milligrams of iron to function properly. The biggest share of that iron should come from the recycling of old red blood cells, with only a small amount estimated to be a few milligrams still needed to be ingested through food. New red blood cells are then made to live for around 120 days, after which they are again broken down and remade. These few milligrams of day of external iron can easily be covered with a little red meat twice a week. If, however, you regularly consume much more than this, or even supplement with high doses of iron, you run into a problem. How exactly? Well, our bodies aren't that great at eliminating excess iron. Over time, this excess iron then accumulates in the biounavailable form that I just talked about. This is also why misinterpreting blood iron levels can be so dangerous. If someone has a problem with their iron recycling system, this can show up as a deficiency in the blood because their body isn't able to use and transport its own iron properly. If your practitioner then tells you to supplement more iron, initially your blood levels will rise because nutrients always land in the blood first after they are absorbed in the stomach. 
But if you continue to supplement while doing nothing to improve your iron recycling and transport system, this additional iron will also land in the tissue and become biounavailable. So in the long term, you are making the problem worse, not better. Now, at this point, you might think that measuring ferritin levels, which is the primary iron storage protein, can avoid such a problem. It is usually said that ferritin indicates how much iron your body stores. So most practitioners think that if blood ferritin is low, your body's iron stores are also low. Unfortunately, this is also misleading, because ferritin isn't even primarily supposed to be in the blood. It is supposed to be inside the cells of tissue. In fact, when ferritin shows up in the blood, it is a clear indicator of cells breaking down. So by the time that ferritin protein shows up in your blood work, the iron inside has probably already been released. What that means is that both normal iron blood tests, along with other markers such as ferritin, can be very misleading if taken at face value. Like I said before, the iron overload in your organs can often come with a deficiency in the blood. In that regard, iron toxicity is very similar to the topic of copper toxicity, and they are tightly linked because copper and copper-dependent enzymes are what make iron bioavailable. Okay, now that you hopefully have a good overview of iron toxicity, the next question is, how do you fix it? After all, that is what we want, right? By now it should be clear that blindly taking iron supplements isn't the answer. It's better to make the existing iron work for you more efficiently. Doing that requires working with a specialist, because only they can tell whether you have a true iron deficiency or an iron recycling problem. Because iron toxicity is so complicated, it's also a very controversial topic, just like copper toxicity. Most practitioners working only with blood tests believe that it can only happen in people with a genetic condition called hemochromatosis. My own experience and that of specialists familiar with the topic says otherwise. Making your own iron bioavailable again is pretty complex, so I cannot fully cover it in this video. But two of the areas you definitely need to focus on are one, your copper issues, because copper is vital to iron metabolism, and two, improving your ceruloplasmin levels. Ceruloplasmin is a protein that is critical in making both copper and iron bioavailable. Many people have low ceruloplasmin levels, and there are steps you can take to fix that. Both copper issues as well as improving ceruloplasmin levels are discussed in other videos, so make sure to watch them as well. Again, iron toxicity, just like copper toxicity, is a complicated topic, and you really need to know what you're doing. As a beginner, I always recommend you work with a practitioner. Links to the best practitioners are included in the program, so make sure to reach out to one if you don't know where and how to start.